What's up YouTube? Another day, another video. In today's video, we are covering the Lenovo IdeaPad 5, which is the big brother of the ever so popular IdeaPad 3. For this particular configuration, we've got the latest and greatest. We're rocking Intel's newest 11th generation Core i7 quad-core processor, 8 gigabytes of speedy DDR4 RAM, also the latest integrated Intel Iris Xe graphics, and of course a 500 GB SSD. This also includes the latest Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.1 standard on board. And lastly, yes, this is a full HD 1080p 60 Hertz display. We're gonna see if this laptop has what it takes to be competitive and shine in a already very cutthroat mid-range laptop market and see if it's worth your hard-earned cash. As always guys, if you enjoy the content, if you enjoy this video, consider subscribing to my channel. It truly does help me grow and it helps me procure more items in the future to make sure I can provide quality reviews like this one. Thank you for watching, let's get started. Starting off with the unboxing itself, you can see that the IdeaPad 5 comes in some pretty generic cardboard boxing. Lenovo, like most manufacturers, couldn't be bothered to make it creative. That's okay though, that's expected in most mid-range and low-range laptops. Once you remove the content seal itself, inside you'll find a few classical items. First and foremost, of course, the idea pad itself, which looks pretty nice, but we'll come back to that in just a second. Beyond that, you have the charging adapter. This is a 65 watt charging adapter. It's also worth noting there's no additional cable to plug into the wall. It just serves as a two in one, and it is a proprietary charger, meaning no USB C charging out of the box, unfortunately. Lastly, the most exciting item, of course, the quick start guide, warranty, and compliance information booklet. I'm joking. Let's talk about the design of the idea. Pad 5. Honestly, this actually looks like a very professional and business-like laptop. I always admired that with Lenovo. They don't go excessive or too crazy. There's no unnecessary grooves or curves on this laptop. It's just a nice compact design. This laptop weighs approximately 3.7 pounds, which granted isn't ultra light, but it's not super heavy either. It's somewhere in between. And given the relative build quality of the laptop, that weight seems fairly justifiable to me. Starting with the top side of the laptop, you can see it's just a textureless, smooth, smooth metallic finish. I really like that. You do have the Lenovo branding on the lower right side, but it's nothing too overwhelming. It's just a nice subtle badge. I honestly really, really like that. Now, as you make your way to the side of the laptop, IO diversity is semi-decent. So what I mean by that is you do have a proprietary charging jack. You also have a USB-C port, a dedicated HDMI port, and a headphone jack. On the other side, you'll find two USB 3.0 ports, one of which offers reverse charging. And of course, you also have a dedicated SD card reader and the power indicator. So as you can see, you'll find decent IO diversity, but nothing to write home about. As we make our way to the bottom side of the laptop, you can see it's a hard TPU shell, and that's totally okay. Hopefully, you're not spending much time looking at your laptops, but anyway. With that being said, you do have a large air intake grill. This is obviously to keep the laptop nice and cool and some rubber grips, but not much else to see here. Now, as you unfold the laptop right away again, you see that business-like look Lenovo goes for. It's clean, it's simple, I really like it. Of course, with that being said, palm rest space is decent, but not super spacious, at least not when compared to some of its competitors like Dell Inspiron, for example. Also, I have to say the trackpad is relatively small for a 15 inch laptop. It's nowhere near the size of the likes of MacBook, a Surface Book, for example. Also, it's made of a plastic surface. Thankfully, the trackpad quality itself is pretty good. The clicks are nice and tactile, and it doesn't feel flimsy in the slightest. One area where Lenovo particularly outdid themselves is the keyboard. Not only does it look nice and professional, it's an absolute joy to type on as well. So the keyboard has decent travel, which means every keystroke feels nice to the touch. On top of that, it's tactile, which means it actually feels somewhat like a mechanical keyboard, arguably. Also, one thing I like is that the backlighting is super well done. Each key is individually lit and it definitely shows. Furthermore, you do have the inclusion of a 10 keypad for you number crunchers out there, and you do have dedicated playback keys directly above the 10 keypad. You also have your traditional lineup of function keys, and one thing I wanna give Lenovo a huge shout out for is including a dedicated power button. I cannot tell you how disappointed I get when laptop creators get uncreative and just mix it in with the rest of the keyboard. Thank you, Lenovo. You may have noticed directly above the keyboard, you have this massive speaker grill. Yes, this is exactly where the house 
the stereo speaker setup. We will be doing a sound test later on in the video, so stay tuned for that. Directly above that, you have the hinge itself. Now I'm kind of happy you know, we went with a single system hinge over here. This is good because this stands against wear and tear better over time. However, it does wobble a little bit, so it's a good hinge, but I wouldn't say it's great. As far as the display fitting goes, Lenovo has actually opted to use pretty thin bezels, which are definitely in line with 2021 standards, but also I gotta give kudos to them for having a pretty small laptop chin and a very small laptop forehead. Now on the top of the laptop is where you have your 720p webcam, which is mediocre in quality, but it gets the job done. Also for you privacy conscious consumers out there, yes, Lenovo does actually include a privacy shutter so you can directly block the webcam. Let's take a moment to talk about the actual display itself. So the display in the IdeaPad 5 is dull, literally. So it's not bad, it's just it's just not good either. So what I mean is you start off with a pretty decent full HD display at 1080p with 60 hertz refresh rate, which is all good and all. And of course you have a reasonable peak brightness of 300 nits, which is more than ample for most indoor settings. Although if you are using this in direct or indirect sunlight, you may find your brightness falls slightly short. But with that being said, that's where things get gloomy. So let's talk about the 45% NTSC color spectrum rating, which is relatively low, or if you will, a mere 56% sRGB rating. If you are doing any sort of color intensive task like photo editing, color grading, or even video editing in general, you'll definitely find the display on this laptop is just not up to standard. It feels kind of washed out. So keep that in mind if you are a creative user who uses a lot of color intensive tools. Next, we come to performance. Now I'm happy to say that the IdeaPad 5 is a particularly powerful computer that 11th generation Core i7 chip is definitely capable. So if you're doing any day-to-day -day task, it won't feel any better or worse than let's say an i5 or even an i3 because it's already snappy enough, it's super fast, they feel as fast as they possibly could. Where you start noticing the visible benefits of an i7 chip is when you start doing more resource intensive tasks like photo editing, or to take a step beyond that like video editing. So when I was doing 1080p video editing on Adobe Rush, I'm happy to say that this laptop kept up just fine. It didn't get too hot, it didn't start lagging, it was a pretty good experience. However, I very quickly noticed if you wanna do anything higher than 1080p, that eight gigabytes of RAM very quickly becomes a bottleneck. In fact, I would say, if you are doing a lot of resource intensive activity on this computer, I would highly suggest you consider getting the 16 gigabyte variant if you have the budget to do so. It will make a drastic difference in overall performance when you're really pushing this computer to its limits. Now, I'm predicting the future here when I say at some point in time, someone in the comment section is going to ask one question. I already know this, can it run Fortnite? So I took the honor of actually installing Fortnite on my computer so I could test it for you guys. And to answer your question, yes, you can game on this computer. So in this case, I ran Fortnite and you can definitely get decent frame rates of up to 60 plus FPS if you're playing on low settings. And if you want to lower the native resolution and bring it down to let's say 720p, you can actually get medium settings with 60 plus FPS. So overall, gaming is definitely possible. It is of course limited because you are still using integrated IRS XE graphics, but if you're gonna be doing some occasional light gaming on the side, that's definitely something you can use this laptop for. From a battery life perspective, the IdeaPad 5 is actually pretty decent. So in our test, we got up to 10.5 hours at 50% brightness doing day-to-day -day tasks using Wi-Fi connection, such as web browsing, watching Netflix, going on YouTube, and even actually using the speakers a little bit, which is pretty decent. However, if you start pushing the laptop with more CPU intensive tasks, even at 50% brightness, that quickly drops around seven to eight hours of battery life. And if you dare game on this laptop, then you're just asking for it. Battery life can drop as low as two hours if you're running something like, let's say again, Fortnite for prolonged periods of time. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that Intel's 14 plus 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 nanometer chips just aren't that efficient efficient and hopefully that's something we'll see improve over the iterations but it gives you a good idea that this is definitely one of the better laptops when it comes to battery life. The final aspect I want to talk about before our conclusion is the speaker quality. I have to say I was pretty impressed the speakers on the IdeaPad 5 are really good they're a stereo setup they're fairly loud but you know what don't take my word for it have a listen for yourself. Okay, 
So now that we've covered all the major review items, let's go through my personal verdict. So priced at $900 USD, this configuration of the IdeaPad 5 is decent value. So overall, I think IdeaPad 5 did a pretty good job at building a high quality laptop as far as build quality goes. It feels professional, clean, and sturdy. There's nothing particularly flimsy or cheap about this laptop overall, and I appreciate that. Now, unfortunately, the weakest link in the IdeaPad 5 has to be its display, which definitely feels more towards the lackluster side. I don't know why Lenovo doesn't put an emphasis on this. I wish they did, but they often overlook this. Other than that though, the keyboard, the trackpad are also absolutely great to use. They feel nice and subtle, but at the same time, premium. And this laptop actually has a few premium elements like that really nice sounding speaker system and just the fact that they have metal finishes in certain areas of the laptop. Also that metallic gray color goes nicely. It doesn't look too dominating, but it also feels clean at the same time. Overall, I think this is a pretty powerful laptop that's great for someone who's looking to do CPU intensive activities with a mix of day-to-day -day activities as well. And of course you can do light gaming. But if you are going to be a creative user who relies heavily on color accuracy, you may want to look the other way because this laptop just doesn't have what it takes from a display perspective to keep up with the needs of creative professionals. That's my overall verdict, of course. I'd love to hear what you guys think about this laptop, whether or not you think it's a good value at the $900 USD price point, and whether you're getting one. As always, guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, consider liking this video really consider subscribing to my channel. As I mentioned earlier, not only does it help me grow, it helps me make it easier to procure items like this laptop so I can provide quality reviews for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. It means a lot to me. I'll catch you in the next one. Solo Tech, logging out.